taking off work today. I'm headed back home to see my dad and my mom and uh, do a couple things with them. Uh, take care of some cars. Like actually the uh, Nova that I did the uh, Fitech install on. Um, my dad is uh, had been out running the dog crap out of it and uh, messed up the transmission in it so I'm actually going back home uh, gonna try and tear his transmission apart see if I can get it back together and fix it so he can uh, get back on the road and start doing some more burnouts and such but uh he drives that thing like he's a 12 year old boy and his parents you know 70 Nova but uh anyway so I'm on the road it's like a two and a half hour drive and I'm about 15 minutes outside of uh, Kansas City from where I live and I'm actually getting pretty close to the new drag strip that they're building so I kind of thought while I'm over this way I may drive on past it and uh, I know a lot of the guys you know a lot of you people that are following and stuff like that right now um, are more than likely local uh, so I kind of felt like showing you the drag strip you know my I don't know that many people know exactly where it is. So here is the exit from Kansas City. It is exit 41, just outside of Odessa, Missouri. And go up here, Let's see if we can see any progress. They've been doing a lot of work on the uh, on ramps and stuff here, so that's for, that's a you know good thing. this north outer road let's see maybe they'll have like a sign up or something talking about the drag strip who knows there's not really much out here a bunch of trees and what used to be houses but you know they've been fighting all this legal stuff with noise ordinance and all this crap and I'm like you're five miles outside of anywhere I'm pretty sure you'll be okay but uh, there are some neighbors and all that you know you've got a couple a couple houses here hey look first responder uh, life flight thing that's kind of neat be so close to the track you know if there were ever any accidents and this I believe this is all part of the track here I, don't quote me on it, but I feel like the track owns this, um, which would be kind of neat to be able to utilize this for equipment and such. Um, but yeah, part of me feels like this is added, you know, part of the property. Don't quote me on that. I don't know for certain. Um, but anyways, you can see the uh, I-70 Speedway, which now it's going to be named something totally different. Um, oh, they got the gate closed. <laughs> So they've got no trespassing signs here and I don't know if you can see that but there's actually you can see some of the dirt work going on back there but they actually had to put these signs up because they were having problems with when the gate was open and they were back there working people would literally just drive up in this place and just kind of hang out and see what was going on um, which granted we can't do that today so but you can kind of see some of the dirt work going on back there let me see if I can get this up here All that that you can see right there is mostly just the, uh, the circle track. Uh, the drag strip is actually on the back side. Um, the drag's on the back side of the circle track itself. Oh, look at this guy. What's he doing? I'm getting passed on an outer road. I guess he didn't, uh, didn't like me driving the speed limit. Huh. Interesting. Um, but yeah, so that's the drag strip you know the where it's gonna be and all that so I'm gonna get back on the road keep heading back home and I'll see you guys when we get there all right so we're down here back home where I'm from uh, seeing my folks doing some stuff for my old man and uh, 
I've actually came down to uh, work on the Nova and uh, hasn't really worked out quite so well. Um, sorry, it's probably really dark back here in the corner. I don't have all the lights on. Um, but yeah, this is my, my dad's shop. This actually used to be a uh, firehouse for this little small town they live in. This town's only 172 people. So it's in the middle of nowhere, central Missouri and there's not even a gas station or anything in this town but my dad actually owns this building and it's what used to be the old fire station and the i believe that's the town museum slash no take that back that's city hall so yeah that's city hall there and then uh back in here somewhere i don't know like the town museums in there and then the post office Actually, this here, yeah, this is the entrance to the museum, and then the post office is around the corner. I'm sorry if the wind's uh, really bad. It's actually really, really windy out here um, today. The, you can see the clouds are kind of rolling in, but uh, yeah, this is the town. Like this, what you see is what is here. Um, there's a little park, not much of a park. They have a, a school back here in the distance. You can kind of see it back here. Um, I believe that's actually kindergarten through sixth grade i think it is um but you got to think there's only 172 people in this town so there's probably about 50 kids in that school maybe but uh yeah and that's it there's literally nothing uh my dad's buddy owns this place super cool it's actually like used to be a restaurant and a barber shop or something like that but now it's actually just a, a shop that's he's got a bunch of old cars and stuff uh super cool he does some body work and stuff on cars and restores them and whatnot but he's got all kinds of cool stuff back there but and then let me see i can't really get a good view of this but and then plus it's super windy this is driving me crazy i'm sure it's annoying on the camera here but uh if i can walk out here this yeah you can see the fire truck exit and stuff this actually used to just be the old firehouse it's old brick building uh, my old man's kind of made it to where he can function out of it with you know working on the cars and stuff we work on but uh we, we did some spray insulation and stuff in here. It actually helps keep it up. This is kind of neat. This was like an old archway into like what used to be the courthouse or something in there. So that's kind of neat. Um, but yeah, and he's got this big season greeting sign. But he actually opened this up back here and made it to where you could drive from one end to the other and out the back into the parking lot. And then, you know, we did some storage and all that stuff. But it's just a really neat old building. I love this place. It's so cool. It's got so much history to it. And uh, we just use work on old cars. Actually got the Belvedere in here. Uh, I haven't, I don't think I've showed anything of that car yet. Um, it's kind of my dad's pride and joy. We did a paint job and stuff on it here probably 10, 12 years ago and a bunch of other stuff, but it's, it's pretty rad. Um, here, I'll actually, while I'm already doing this, I guess I can go ahead and pull this up. But it's a 67 Belvedere, Belvedere 2. We had all the interior redone. Um, this is actually the original colors of everything. The car was black with white vinyl interior. Um, this is probably my favorite car my dad's had probably ever. Um, and probably the nicest. But, I mean, it's, we got the car. It was this color. It uh, was actually in really good shape. We didn't have to do much body work to the thing. And then we just, Kept it the same color when we repainted it. My mom hated the color, but we stuck with it, and now she loves it. But uh, it's it's pretty cool. Ah, damn it! I wanted to show you the engine here while I was, had this back. And I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, actually had a 446 pack in it when we got it, and it ran okay. But for the longest time, I tried to convince Dad that it could have run better. So this was actually the first car that I did the uh, Fitech EFI on. I did their, uh, I think it was their 600 horsepower kit. Uh, but I had convinced them to pull all the six pack stuff off of it. Put the Fitech kit on it with their uh, fuel management or fuel command center or whatever that is. Um, but putting that on there and this car ran like it had a totally different engine. And it was crazy. Um, we actually had to change the converter in it because it ran so much better with the fuel injection on it that the converter just didn't work right for it. So we had to uh, change it out and uh, 
I think we went back to the stock converter. Yeah, that's what we did. We went to the, back to the stock converter. Um, but the converter we had in it was a big stall, and we had to put that in there because it ran so crappy on the six pack that it it needed the stall to be able to get it to rev up and leave clean like. Um, I, I can't really describe it, but basically when we put the fuel injection on it, it ran so much better that cruising and all that stuff, it was always just trying to like stall up and you could never get it up on the converter because it cruised so much better and we didn't want to burn up the transmission. Uh, so we ended up uh, putting the stock stall back in it or stock converter back in it. And I mean, it just ran like a totally different car. So pretty rad back in the shop today and i think my last video was or second to last video was pretty much me giving you kind of a rundown of what was going on with the the boost knuckle and i've been kind of tinkering with it a little bit here and there um, because at this point i'm kind of really in no hurry and like i told you you know there's some some big items i need to purchase and all this stuff so i'm kind of just slowly you know dragging my feet kind of getting getting moving on this this whole project but anyways uh i pretty much got it just about ready to pull out you know all the wiring loom and everything's off of it um i'm gonna go ahead and pull the starter and stuff off of it but i'm just gonna pull the motor out of it the tranny's probably gonna stay in there because i'm gonna do some mock-up and stuff with it um I, i'm gonna attempt to not use that transmission in this truck with the new motor i'm gonna attempt to you know buy a new transmission something that'll take a little bit more abuse than this you know barn fine transmission i bought last i don't know year and a half ago or something but pretty much now i've got to do the exhaust and everything's off of it obviously um i need to unbolt the bell housing unbolt the torque converter um motor mount bolts and it comes out that's pretty much it so i'm gonna get all this unbolted and get this thing pulled and we may i need to clean up the frame a little bit it's a little dirty um and that drives me crazy um but i'm gonna try and get this new motor maybe test fitted in there uh make sure all of my mounts and everything are in the right spot and all that and then uh i'm just gonna pull it back out because like i said i gotta put a, a flex plate on it and torque converter and transmission and all that stuff but anyways let's uh get this unbolted get this old motor out got the 53 all unbolted and yanked out of the out of the truck um don't mind my hat i've been out doing some yard work today um but yeah we got the uh motor unbolted from the train got the motor out of it it's actually on the stand i got it in the garage covered up and then 6-2 is here just waiting i've actually got a figure out where I'm going to run the uh, oil drain. I was going to put it here, but I'm super weird because it's going to have to be a 90 degree bend and I don't like that. So I may end up fabricating something that's got, you know, kind of a downward slope and then a, a fitting, say like right here. And then off the turbo, I can just run right into it around, you know, accessories and stuff like that and not get in the way of the uh, balancer and stuff. But uh, I went ahead and pulled the 80 pound injectors out of the blower. I um, just went ahead and threw them in this. Um, as of right now, I think I'm going to... i got to get some fittings for this, for the rail, so I can do all the plumbing there. Um, but I think for now, uh, since Brent from PFI Speed came through and sent me a converter for the truck, I think I'm just going to put the converter in this transmission. Um, I've got a stock flex plate for the... Uh, 6.2 it's actually a uh, LT flex plate but the LT uses an 8 bolt crank just like the LSA does so that's I found that at work that was awesome it saved me like 60 bucks and that was just in the scrap bin but uh I'm gonna get it bolted in and I think for now I'm just gonna try and get it up and running with this stock turbo 400 and that converter and then uh with the 80 pound injectors and the uh I've got the 450 Walbro pump that I got with the 80 pound injectors from South Bay fuel injectors. Uh, go check them out, those guys. Any of your fueling stuff, they're super easy to deal with. Frank and Julie over there are great people. But uh, anyways, for now, until uh, I get the converter for this, um, well, once I get the converter for this, I'll get it all bolted up and start getting it put in the truck. And we'll just start 
you know fabricating and going back together trying to do some charge pipe figuring out the exhaust and all that stuff so anyways that's going to do it for this video uh thanks for watching don't forget comment like subscribe we'll see you guys later